afternoon and welcome to another Burr News News and Views. We're at the lovely House Bermuda as always. And uh, today we have our friends from the Bermuda Football Association back again. Uh, created a lot of excitement over the summer for us. Uh, we have Coach Kyle Lightborn. Yes, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Captain Dante Levrock. Hello, nice to be here. And uh, I've, I found out have has a great sense of humor. I saw you back, yeah. Basco. Glad to be here. Yeah. Uh, uh, had quite a few laughs. I didn't know uh, before getting the, the time to spend with you d during the Gold Cup, but you, you made me laugh on several occasions just with your sense of humor, so I've <laughs> lightened things up a little bit. So we have Panama tomorrow night at uh, 7 o'clock, Coach. Um, how excited are you to, to have this game? Yeah, it's nice to be back um, with the national team back up and playing. Very important game for us. Um, so we're at home. We're we're looking to come out and, and get three points. Right. What does it mean? Because Panama is the second of three of the three Concacaf representatives that were in the World, World Cup um, in 2018. What does it mean to you guys to to be facing this higher level of competition? Oh, it's important for our development and our growth as a, as a country with football. So. It's up to us to be able to manage the game on the day, on the night, and be able to uh, do ourselves proud. You know, we're played well in, in a lot of the, the games, you know, over the Girl Cup. Now can we step on the gas again and play well and, and get the result that we're looking for? Yeah, I think it's important for us, um, you know, we, we worked hard together. You know, there's a lot of hard work behind the scenes as well. Um, and, you know, as players, we always want to play at the top level. And, you know, now we get to test ourselves. And, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. We have a lot of good young players coming through. We're starting to come, you know, a few don't realize how young he is. And we're starting from young and training. And then he has a great goal for our training. So, you know, I think that's the important part as well to just bring around to the team. And, you know, ready to get the job done. What's up? Um, yeah, I think um, the good thing about this this Nations League is that it's coming so quick after the Gold Cup, so we could just carry straight on from everything that we had been doing in the Gold Cup, and I could just transfer that straight to the Nations League. Pretty much the uh, same team, so nothing really is going to change. Have the same platform and just keep going on from there. Right. And just for our viewers, uh, so you can understand, like the Gold Cup was the top 16 uh, teams in CONCACAF, and the Nations League A, which is what we need to qualify for, is a, a, even a higher level than that. So, you know, the boys and guys are getting a chance to test themselves against the region's best on a regular basis. And I think that a part of the thing for the Nations League is that CONCACAF wants to, you know, when they expand eventually to the World Cup to 48 teams, they want to be able to get more slots in, in that. Yeah, and this is the competition that's going to provide provide that platform for it. So we we're playing against teams like Mexico, Panama, in in League A. Um, it's going to make us a better team in the long run. How, how do you guys feel like the Gold Cup has helped prepare you, you know, to be able to face Panama and Mexico next? Um, you know, beforehand there was some unknown quality, but now after playing those three matches, you know, with with tight two one losses that, that that could have been victories, and then the victory over um, in the last game, how, how do you think that's prepared us? Yeah, I think it's prepared us well. Like you said, it was a little bit of a unknown, you know, as far as the whole team, as far as fitness, as far as staying in the matches. Um, so a lot of questions got answered in, in that department. Um, we know at, at this level we're going to have periods where teams will be, probably be on, on top of us. And it's managing those moments. And um, that's, that's, that's where we are, you know, learning that part of the game. Yeah, I think that experience was massive for us, even just to prove to ourselves that we, you know, we can compete. At that level, um, like the gaffer said, you know, game management is going to be vital in these games. We're playing higher level teams. Uh, they have professional players playing at high levels all over the world. So 
-hmm. and I'm sure that you know a lot of the boys, even including myself, you know, we want to achieve those type of same goals. So I think it's going to be important for us just to, you know, I think we grew up a lot during the Gold Cup, and I know I learned a lot, you know, especially from the Haiti game. You know, that mm -hmm. second half, you know, you know, things change and they got momentum, and you know, maybe we could have done a bit things different, you know, including myself. So. I know I learned a lot from the Gold Cup, and you know I trust this team. You know I'm proud of them still, and you know the journey just continues now. Yeah, and you wrote yourself into the Bermuda history books by scoring scoring that first goal against Haiti. Yeah, I mean there's always a good feeling, but I'd rather not score than we won. But you know <laughs> what I mean. But it is what it is. You know we learn from it, and now we just keep moving forward. Okay. Um Yeah, I just think that we're all a bunch of confident players. You know we believe in our talent, and I think. Going to the Girl Cup and actually putting on the performances that we did kind of verified of how good of a team that we actually are. It's not just we think we are, we actually showed it. So we just have to just keep trusting in the coaches that they're giving us the right information and just keep pushing on in the right direction. I think one of the things that impressed me was if you look at the Gold Cup, obviously a couple of teams were outclassed, you know, as shown by the results. And even though Bermuda was considered minnows, and the betting odds and the punters, you know, put us down at the bottom. We were never outclassed in any of those matches. Yeah, I mean, that was important for us. Like I said, we're going into a major tournament um, that we competed well. And we ticked a lot of boxes in their places, but, you know, it, overall, I think we're all disappointed that we didn't get out of the group because we felt we played well enough mm -hmm. to get out of the group. But it's a learning card for us. Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the goal the next time, the next Gold Cup, will be to, to take that next step and get to the next round. Yeah, I think, but the way it's set up for, to get to the Gold Cup, it's a little different from the format that they had last time. So it's important for us to stay in League A. It's very important for us to make the next Gold Cup. Yeah, so. What's the what's the format for the next Gold Cup? Well, you you got it's a promotion and relegation uh, situation. So when you go to League B, that means that you got to win League B in order to be involved in that that Gold Cup because it's um, what is it twelve twelve teams uh, in, uh, in A. Yeah. So <laughs> when they look, they're only looking for another four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so and that's the four teams that win. B, the group, yeah. the groups that make up the Gold Cup. So, you know, you got Jamaica and B, you got El Salvador and B. You know, teams like that are that are in in League B. So that's why I say it's important for us to stay in A. <coughs> so it makes things a little easier when when it comes to that time. Now the Concacaf is looking at making um, the Gold Cup the qualification tournament for the World Cup. Um. Not necessarily, no. you know, it's, 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 um, the World Cup, I think it starts next summer, so we need to, uh, it's going to be group stages, uh, so we're going to be seated in a, and, you know, it's important for us to stay in Group A. Right. That's another reason, because it, it helps us to be seated in a battle group, so it's a couple competitions within, so this competition ends uh, in November. Yes. After after our last match against uh, Mexico, so if we stay in in A. That helps us when they do the draw for the for the um, for the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Now, Dante, you mentioned um, uh, playing against professional players and things, but you're a professional yourself. So why don't you tell? our audience a little bit about the, the team you play for and what the competition like is in your league. Yeah, I play in the League of Ireland in the Premier Division there. Um, you know, it's a good level. You have a lot of players that come from England, you know, playing League One, League Two. And, you know, you have the likes of, you know, a lot of people know Shamrock Rovers, you know, they play in Europa League, Champions League as well. Um, you know, it's a good level. It's a lot of good players. You know, it's a tough league, physical, uh, as to be expected. And I've, I've enjoyed my time there. Um, I got about two months left of my season after this, so you know I'm just working hard, trying to finish strong with them, and then see what's next after that. So when does your season run? 
Uh, it ends in October, so it starts in about March to October, so. Well, it's it, kind of unusual for the UK. Yeah, well, it's yeah. European-based, yeah. you know, scheduling, you know, so a lot of these yeah, European uh, leagues do that because of the winters, mm -hmm. you know, so you have to play throughout the summer, so. And what's Darlington like? Um, yeah, it's, um, it's a nice experience, you know, it's very different from what I was used to growing up. It's a lot more physical, you know, it's men's football, so I've just got to try to carry on the, my performances from the Gold Cup straight into the new season and I thought I've done quite well just after um, just keep it going. Right. And yeah. you're not the only Bermudian that plays for Darlington? No, um, we have Justin Dunno as well who came over. He's um, done extremely well considering it's his first time playing in England and he's uh, adapted extremely well. So just have to, um, you know, just try to keep going and just see where this season can take us. So what are like what are the facilities and things like where, where you're playing? You know, most Bermudians can compare what we have here, which obviously is not much of a comparison. And I have a little bit frame of reference from La Liga, where you guys train in Costa Rica. So, uh, what are they like? Yeah, I mean we have good facilities. You know, we have everything we need there. You know, gyms. You know, we train at you know the stadium. You know, we have our prehab. You know, we have the food there and clubhouse and all those type of things you know it's, it's just in being in that professional environment you know I wake up early in the morning go to train and go to the gym you know eat lunch at the stadium so you know I just I basically live that footballer life lifestyle which I'm blessed to do you know and I, I, I will tell our audience one of the most impressive things that, that stood out to me when we were in Costa Rica was the first morning after the team had gotten in like probably got to bed like at one o'clock in the morning I happened to be walking along, and I did see somebody in the gym first thing in the morning working mm. out, even mm. though you didn't have to. Mm. So yeah. that, that really stood out to me. And one of the things that I was telling people that you know, you know, you set the attitude that you know you're not here for just to be here. You're here to to be serious. Yeah, hundred percent. I think you know. I think we gained a lot of respect now, and I think you know the teams won't mm. underestimate us as much. So you know, we even have to step our level up. You know that extra, that extra oomph, and like like so you said, we're a confident group. You know, we honestly believe we could beat anyone. So, right. now uh, we were talking about professional players. One player you won't have this time around is Jonte Smith. Um, just signed a contract with um, Cheltington Town. Yeah. Okay. So, um, how much of a miss is he going to be? Uh, yeah, he's he's important to our squad because he he has the ability to score goals. I mean. Well, he hasn't. He didn't play a lot in the in the um, Gold Cup, but we think we think his time will come for the national team, and he can bring that. He, he has a different side to his game that he can bring to us. So, yeah, he'll be a miss in and around the, the change room. He's, he's more of a quiet guy than than a more outspoken. But um, no, he, he's a part of the, the group, so of course we're going to miss him. Yeah. He's also a, a budding field reporter, as I turned him into mm. after the <laughs> after the game against Costa Rica. He has a little bit of a knack for that. Um, so, who you know, obviously people know about Wells as being our, our top professional and, and Reggie Lamb. But who else are, is playing professionally for Bermuda? Uh, we have Willie Clemens. We have Roger Lee. Uh, Zika. Zika Lewis. Mm -hmm. So, so these guys are you know, got the experience of playing at a higher level on a, on a consistent basis. Um, our local players have come along really well. You know, we, we find that the ones that we do have that are locally playing, they keep their level very high. So we're, we're pleased with them. All right. Were, were you a little disappointed that um some contracts weren't offered after the Gold Cup? Uh, yeah, for some uh, players, we yeah. say. But this is a part of the game that we have to be consistent. You know, people look at you, that doesn't mean that they're, they're not going to take that opportunity. You know, they want to see, okay, that's a one-off. Is it a one-off? Can they perform again? All these things, that's what um, people do. They look, they look at you for a longer period than just one tournament. Um, so yeah, you know, it was, we was hoping that Dale would have gotten signed by someone because we feel that 
you know, he, he can play at professional level uh, without a problem. And, but it's still there for him. He's, he's mm -hmm. got to perform again. Right. That's the thing about professional sport. You have to keep performing. You know, the minute you stop performing, then someone comes in and takes your place. Yeah, he's given us several accolades uh, during the tournament. Um, man of the match, um, save a yeah, game, that sort of, of the round or whatever the case may be. Uh, so I was really impressed. And, and then and then added on top of that, you know, Dale's humanitarian efforts, given the, the, the one kid a, a, a jersey and then the little girl the gloves. Yes. Quality. Yeah, that's all, you know, all the good things that happened in that tournament, you know, and um, we just need to be consistent, mm -hmm. and then people can't deny you mm -hmm. that you're consistent. Now, for the atmosphere leading up to the Panama game um, amongst the guys in training this week, what's it been like? I think it's been good for them to be back together. You know, it was kind of hard for us. We didn't really have a proper debrief because mm -hmm. right after the tournament, you know, players were. Some of them didn't come back to Bermuda. Some people ran different ways, and you know. But they're 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 excited to be back. You know, cracking jokes with one another. <laughs> what was it like to be back at training with with everyone? You know, um, it's always nice to see everybody. We stay in contact even when we're not on international duty. You know, we have a group chat. Everyone's almost every day with us talking with one another, making sure everyone's doing good and stuff like that. So just to be around everybody again is an awesome feeling, you know, that that buzz around the team that what we're doing, you know, it doesn't stop here. It's, it's going to keep going. So just have to keep that, that happy environment around the team. I hope we could just keep performing. Yeah. I, I, one of the th after one of the activities, um, while you guys came back, I, I saw you on North Shore. Um, with two of the team, I might have been Zico and, some, and somebody else, and I sort of screamed on my bike as I went. But, <laughs> but it's, it's like you guys have that kind of friendship that, that you guys want to hang with each other afterwards. Yeah. Which like, is, like we have that friendship outside of football, you know. So it's mm -hmm. not like we became friends because we met each other on the on the national team. We've known each other for years before that. So it's just a bonus that we're allowed to play with each other on the pitch. <laughs> that's a, that's all it is. So. Well, about Panama specifically, what do you know about the team? What do, what do you think? You know, you're you're looking at. They're going to present to you tomorrow night. And yeah, they're going to cause us problems. We we feel that, um, but we want to impose our style on them. Um, we have to have those things come out in the game. They also have a new management team, so the things that we have seen. Uh, in the Gold Cup, they may do things a little different, but I think one thing that us as the coaching staff, we have started a, lift, a lot of different ways that teams play, so we have to react quicker than mm -hmm. if we see that they're doing something different, we, we're going to have to, you know, change a couple things that we might have worked on. Mm -hmm. um, immediately so they don't have that success so we have a couple different ways that we can play and i don't think it would be a problem for our players to adjust during the match and you know that's the, like when we look back at the first game against haiti we had to adjust and we, we took too long to adjust and they end up scoring the two goals mm -hmm. um but the second game against Costa Rica, we adapted. Costa Rica had a little spell in the game, but we adjusted and we, you know, we, we came back at them. So we're, we're learning as we go along and we're, we have to learn quick. Yeah. So. I mean, part, part of the thing is, we talk about the players learning things, but it's also the coaching staff learning and adjusting as well. Yeah, it is. I mean, we, our coaching staff, we spend a lot of time together, you know, after the training sessions, having meetings and talking about different things and things that we can do better, um, like while the game's on and even leading up to training. So that's a part of our work that we have to do. We only have the players for a short time. Um, so we have to make sure that we go over 
a lot of crucial things that that possibly can happen in the game. Right. How how much freedom does Dante have during the game to if he sees something to to help adjust? He has a lot of freedom to mm -hmm. to have a go or if he sees something that that um maybe needs to be tweaked, you know the message gets gets sent. They're they're part of the team, so. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not always up to the coaches. They have to think on their feet when they're in the match. Don't they having that kind of freedom and, and being a relationship with the coach and the coaching staff, how does that empower you? Yeah, I mean, but I think that's um, with any of the players, you know. Mm -hmm. We have a, a fluid system, you know. Like you said, we have the likes of Naki Wells and Reggie Lamb, and they have, you know, high football IQs. So sometimes mid-match, you know, they may see something and then communicate it. And obviously, I have a lot of voice. If they mm -hmm. can get it to me, then I just pass it on and show it to others. But, you know, I think that everyone on the team, you know, we're growing. And international football is different from club football. You know, it's um, a different, it's different environments and different styles of play. Um, I think it's more like a chess match. You know, club football is more, you know, fast pace and go, go, go. But, you know, international football is up. You know, it's more like, you know, important about the tactics and things. So, like I say, you know, throughout the match, you know, anyone can figure out something and it's just passing on and communicating well that we still have to improve on that as players. But, like I said, we're growing so much and I see it within, you know, the players on the team. So, you know, we're just going to continue and continue working hard and just proving everybody wrong. Is it, is it a little bit difficult in preparing for this match? Because with Panama having the, the changes that they've made at the top level with the, with the coaching staff and they haven't played any matches since then. How do you prepare for something like that? Yeah, I mean, we just have to look at, they have a coach that's from Argentina. Um, we have to look at and study how he's, his teams have played in the past. So that's what we've been doing over the like last night and parts of today. and we'll get a sort of a sense of how they're, they're possibly going to play. I mean, the one thing that doesn't change is the players that they have. Um, you know, we were able to, to watch their players and technically they're good. Um, and they play to a certain system during the Gold Cup. Um, they may be doing things a little different. So it's, it's football. We have to adjust according to how things happen. We have to do it quick. Right. Who are the danger men or, or players you, can, you think you're going to have to watch out for? Well, I, I, I know Calderon's been there for forever, but... Yeah, I, I go over numbers that uh -huh. they, they were wearing. So it's... <laughs> um, you know, they had some dangerous players, number 19, number uh, 11, 23, 10. They seem to be the ones that... And 9. To, to ones that can cause you problems. But I thought they looked a little suspect defensively. Um, so I think we can cause them problems defensively. Right. Now, what sort of crowd are you hoping for tomorrow night? I mean, I know this, for, the, for the Gold Cup, we had some, some decent crowds, uh, but mostly contained to, <laughs> to the one side. Now that we're playing Panama, this, you know, this one of the uh, top ranked teams in our region, how do you hope the, the, the fan size is going to be tomorrow night? I'm hoping for a boozoo crowd tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want. <laughs> Fill the stadium out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone needs to come out and support us. You know, we're playing in the top, the top level teams and, you know, we're going to do our part. So we're asking everyone to come out, bring your mamas, grandmas, everyone. And, you know, we're willing to put on a show for them. You know, just come out and support. Yeah, I think um, especially when we're getting back from the Girl Cup, there's a big buzz around the island. So if we could just carry that on into all our home games and just get right behind us because they could be the difference. Yeah, and this is your first chance to play at home since the Gold Cup. So uh, I mean, I'm hoping that the crowd's going to be tremendous. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, if you haven't got your tickets, go to the BFA office, go purchase them, purchase some jerseys. That way it helps the team as well. Uh, I was up there earlier today and... Um, I saw a woman buying a shirt for herself and her, her daughter, um, somebody else checking out the game time. So um, I'm hoping that the crowd's going to be really, really tremendous. Um, so besides Jonte, what other changes are in the, in the squad for, for tomorrow? All right, we're brought in Detroit Bell and uh, Darren Usher. Darren's been a part of the squad for some time. Um, 
he's a defender, even though Jonte was a, an attacker. So um, we just moved Sequoia from being a midfield player more to a front player. And uh, Darren comes in as an actual defender. Hmm. And, and Dietre is a goalkeeper. He's coming in for Jaquil Hill, who's, who's injured. Um, so, and Dietre has been a, a part of our system for quite some time. He was a goalkeeper for the under 20s that ran to Costa Rica a few years ago. So, yeah, he, you know, it's nice to have him back. I mean, there's several guys from that from that squad are now graduated to the to the senior squad. So, you know, they're used to playing at this higher level against higher teams. Yeah. So now we have four players that was in that team in the squad. So it's Asaji, it's Liam, it's Milan, and now Dietre. Right. So, well, that's that's what it's about. You know, we have to think of our younger players. Um, you know, one of the things in our meeting. Last night was integrating some of the younger players that are in the under 20s and under 17s to the senior team. How do we do that? What does that look like? You know, when do they get that opportunity to let them be a part of it? So, you know, that's why you have youth teams. So, you know, you know, not all of them is going to make it, but there's a few that possibly can make that step up so we have to give them that opportunity yeah and, and the key thing is i noticed like several years ago the bfa made that transition they were focused on youth rather right. than the senior team just to start that level to to go up through because if you don't have the, the root growing properly mm. the, the, you're not going to see the beautiful flowers and the, everything else not that that's maybe not the best analogy for for guys but um <clears throat> But the, how important is it to, to blend these guys in, you know, you're not hanging on to guys that seem like you're, you don't have anybody else better to play? Yeah, that's very important. Um, like you said, that's what we've been talking about. And it, it's got to be at the right time, the, the transition. You know, it's hard to throw players in to a, mm -hmm. uh, a level that we're playing at right now. And they're untested. You know, everyone that's in the squad's been tested uh, to 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 this capacity that we're going to be playing in. So it's it's all about the timing of bringing other people in. Um, so yeah, and we know. don't have a very old squad. I mean, what Sequoia's the, the oldest? Sequoia's the oldest. Yeah. <laughs> Just throw that out there. Throw me under the bus. Sequoia's played probably with everyone that's on the coaching staff. <laughs> <laughs> People's parents. Uh, no. <laughs> but no, he's, and he mentioned today or yesterday that he's only a year older than the keys. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we, are, we have a relatively good age group, you right. know, mid 20s and uh, a few younger younger players like early trainers so that's good you yeah. know. Um, the the training during the week the the guys as, as you come you've come back in um, what's the atmosphere like for you specifically facing Panama what are you, you know what are you guys talking about um, right now it's it's no doubt in our mind that we can get a result especially because we feel that we're very strong at home we show that against teams like El Salvador, you know, it's not going to be an easy game. We know that, but we are very yeah. confident that we should get a result and that we can get a result. So the atmosphere has been it's been good. So we just have to just keep carrying that on until tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah I think we're focused and eager. Um, you know, you, it's always good coming back, coming back amongst your friends and coaching staff, and you know, getting ready to play. But then you get you know a bit antsy. You want to just play the game. But, uh, you know, it's tomorrow night, and I think everyone's getting that little space of zen, you know, doing the individual things that they need to do to get to get ready. You know, we'll do our last little preps tonight. And honestly, for, for myself, I'm just ready to go. Is there anything special that you guys have to do differently because it's a CONCACAF A-League game? Uh, special? No, not really. No. Okay. Um, we just have to follow protocol. Mm -hmm. You know, tonight's training is... It's one hour. It's the time set by CONCACAF. 
um, on the main pitch, and it's the same for the other team. Mm -hmm. They could train somewhere else if they want to, but uh, you know, match day minus one. We're used to that. It's things that we're used to. Is it's just a regular protocol that goes on. No, no. I found out this when I was down in, in Costa Rica. So yeah, match day minus one. There's a different set of protocol than than match yeah, day so minus the, two. Right. So the, the the media is allowed to come here for 15 mm -hmm. minutes, watch a bit of the training, maybe take a few clips, and then they have to disappear in case the team does S special set plays or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> most. Mm -hmm. Most of the work has been done, or I would say from our behalf, mm -hmm. our set pieces and stuff have been done. It's just a matter of um, the players getting a feel of the pitch, the balls that we're going to be using, maybe the conditions of, you know, the wind factor that can be up at National mm -hmm. Stadium. There's little things, and I mean, we're used to it, but the away team probably never experienced that pitch before. So. That's the point of the hill exercise. I meant to do a story about this, but I never did when I was down there. But for, for the uh, Gold Cup, you guys had a specific training ball that they, they had you train with. Is the same thing for um, the A-League, or, or are you using your No, the home team gets to pick what balls they're going to use, and we're going to be using Adidas balls tomorrow. So we'll play it with them in all our... Um, uh, Nations League games leading up to this. So. Did you find the ball reacted differently to using the ones for Concacaf for the Gold Cup? Yeah, the, the Gold Cup balls are nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, Gold Cup balls are. Yeah, you know, it's felt a bit lighter, got a bit more mm -hmm. movement in it, especially when you shot long distance. But um, at the end of the day, it's a ball, you know, it rolls, <laughs> so you just yeah. have to make sure we got the job done on Thursday night. I think that's one of the things like the the average fan or the casual fan doesn't realize that you know you have all these specific things that you have to do to adhere to along the road. As a matter of fact, you were telling me before uh, we got on that because we're playing Mexico, our next home game, there's a special thing that most fans may not be too pleased with. Yeah, <laughs> the timing of that match, and you know, it's it's quite late at night, and it's for TV rights, so that's out of our hands. All right. So when when the fans see that the game's going to be starting at ten thirty, yeah, that's, no, that, that's not that's not the BFA's fault. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not the BFA's fault because we'll request for the game to be earlier, mm -hmm. and, and they tell us that it can't be earlier. So there we go. Yeah, and mainly that's because Mexico has a huge fan base on the, on the west coast and they want to catch yeah and, and the game's going to be televised live so mm -hmm. those are the reasons right there right well, they, they want to obviously for their sponsors they want the largest television yeah mexico brings a whole different level within itself you know mm -hmm. they travel with close to 70 people mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i imagine like they're, they're traveling contingent with fans and things too we're, we're probably going to see an influx of... Yeah, you, you definitely see people that are from Mexico living in Bermuda mm -hmm. come out. Um, but their traveling party is, is quite big because mm -hmm. right. we've done a little bit of a study on it in the Gold Cup and USA, Mexico, they, they both have set like 72. That's including the players. Mm -hmm. And on our Gold Cup venture, I think we had 33. Right. That's including the players. So, you know, that's just the level that they're on. Um, and I know some people were saying, we were surprised that we had we had a, a as large a coaching staff as, as we did in the contingent that was part of it. But, you know, this is just like doubling it and plus some. Yeah, it's, it's a lot that goes on, you know. There's always something that needs to be done. Everybody has their roles and responsibilities. Um, it makes life easier for the players makes life easier for all the coaches, you know, when we have people that um, the busiest person on, on tour is the kit man <laughs> and the people that do the massages and, you know, they have to double up on the rules, whereas Mexico probably have people that just have, that do massages, people that just deal and with the more kit. than one, Carl. <laughs> yeah, then that's it. The people that analyze the games for them, everything is done for them. Um, 
and that's the way it works in the professional world. So at at the international level, that's what they're used to. That's what their budget allows them to have. Right. I know, like I was reading some of the analysis, and they were do, saying how Mexico's fans, regardless of where they were playing, they always had the highest traveling can traveling yeah. fans to to help boost the crowds. I mean, they their fans were actually. Uh, more supportive than the American fans during the Gold Cup. So I, mean, I can imagine there's going to be quite a few here as well to, to try to change that atmosphere. Yeah, they eat. That, that's their life. They eat, sleep, drink football. Um, the supporters, you know, they've been doing this for years. <laughs> What's new to us is old to them, and they, they just continue on. Um, they just look for the fixtures and, you know, we know Mexicans are going to be here for that fixer. <laughs> and people from Panama are going to be here as yeah. well. Probably not as much, but... Not as much, but don't be surprised. Yeah. And we'll see a, see a few of those flags waving yeah. tomorrow night. Now, for you guys, when you found out that the game was going to be at 10.30, I don't know if you, my reaction was you're joking with me, but what was your reaction? Um, personally, it's just, it's just a small thing. If we want to be playing against these big nations, these big, big footballing nations with these big backings, and it's going to be televised, you know, so if you want to stay and keep competing at this level, then there are things that we're just going to have to, to suck up a bit. But it's not a big difference for me personally, you know, because in, in Europe, when I was back in Spain, a lot of the games are later on in the evening. So, But it's just a small little thing that we just have to adapt to on the day and um, just take full advantage of it that it's going to be televised. So what time would your games in Spain start? There's a few games that start around 10, 9, 30. <laughs> Just um, just TV rights also, you know, people get enough work wanting to come watch the game, so it's probably the same reason here, but like I said, we want to keep playing at this level, so hopefully we'll be playing more games at 10.30. Yeah, I mean, as Sergio said, it's it's no big deal, you know, you're playing at this level, these are the things that come along with it. You know, we have a saying in the national team, adapt or die, you know, right. so we just have to push back our preparation and change up our preparation a bit to get used to playing at that time and I'm sure we will you know it's no big deal and like I said right now we'll focus on Panama and getting mm -hmm. the job done. Right. You actually guys have several things uh, or I saw like on, on your social media I think you tagged social uh, golden generation. Mm. What, are, what are some of the other things that you guys refer to yourselves as or, or slogans that you have? Um, that you can yeah. share. Um, <laughs> be brave, adapt or die, golden generation. Um, we have a lot, you know. Maurice Lowe comes up with a yeah. No stand on turn. <laughs> no stand on turn. That was a uh, one in Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. uh, and we live. Mm -hmm. And I think that really helps to motivate us as well. You know, it gives us a set objective, and you know, just keeps us focused. Um, so we we have one now, I believe. So yeah, they they always come up with one <laughs> yeah. and saying finish it off like <laughs> this. You know, the chances that we 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 have been creating. Finish it. Let's finish the job. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if that's the next one for us, and we know everybody has to be focused on it, you know, anybody could score on the field. You know, the, the, the mm -hmm. ten outfield players, most everybody might might have an opportunity at some point. So, even defenders. You know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. One hundred percent. Yeah. Hmm. The, now, Bermuda's never played Panama before, so this is like a historic first in that sense. No, we, we played Panama uh, before, but, you know, obviously I think Panama's at the upper hmm. hand, and, but I don't know about playing Panama in Bermuda. Maybe hmm. they did, but have to look at the records hmm. um, on that, but we're going to hmm. give them a game. Hmm. Now, one of the things, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but one of the things, I, I do as one of my other side like part of the gig economy is like I, I write most of the bios for the Sports Hall of Fame. I've yeah. written all except for three of them. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't actually have a vote. I just do the bios. But uh, I think you you should be in the Hall of Fame um, just from your playing career. But now adding in the, the coaching bit, I think, you know, you, there's, there's no reason why that whenever they decide they're going to have their next class um, that you should be a part of it. Yeah, I appreciate that. and But that's just a thing that, um, you know, it's time. It's mm -hmm. all about the timing of it. And 
when it's selected. So I, I, will, I will be honored to to be a part of that group, and um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, I think part of the thing is like if the, t the last class they had was 2014, so they haven't had one since then. Right. But you'd be, you know, one of those natural. There's no obvious reason why you shouldn't be a part of that <laughs> part of that group. And you can join join Sean and, and some of your other yeah like, so my other friends that are there yeah yeah, yeah. all right well um, our time's flown by quite a bit today um, I want to give you guys all a chance to to have a last last word and again tomorrow's games at seven we were talking a little bit about the Mexico game which is in October or November <laughs> yeah it's October. October 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 so tomorrow's game seven o'clock. There's no reason why you can't be out there for it and support support the guys, but Kyle? Yeah, 7 o'clock tomorrow evening at the National Stadium. We're looking for that um, Buzu Bonton crowd. <laughs> That's what we want. So bring it out, you know. Yeah, come on and support. You know, we're going to put on a good showing. Um, you know, be proud to be Bermudian. And we're going to do our part. Yeah, just like um, you got the skipper said, you know, come on, support us, and just make the difference, you know, take advantage of this hand fixture. Right. And while you're going down to the BFA office to, to purchase your tickets, purchase the jerseys. It all, all helps the team that's, you know, it, I think the jerseys are about $70 for adults and 65 for children. You know, that's one small way that you can show additional support to the team to help give them some funds so they can play a few more matches or they can get more support personnel. To, to do the things that they'd like to do because even like during the Gold Cup having 12 or 13 I think Mike was probably the staff was probably the most that the, the teams ever had and it was helpful yeah it was very helpful you know um, having the 13 staff so yeah. so support them support them with your lungs support them by, with your body by being there and support them by uh, buying a jersey or two right. I, I really appreciate having you guys on today and uh, I'll see you tomorrow night. Yeah, sure. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. All right. I'm Don Burgess, your host for Bernie's News and Views here at the House Bermuda. And as always, have a beautiful day.